everyone and thank you so much for stopping by this channel today we are going to continue on in rooms of wonder and this page with the bathroom bubble bath inside the flower pot so today i'm hoping to finish off the flowers and the little lanterns up the top and get a start on the actual flower pot so we'll see how far we come so I'm going to be using my polychromos pencils as usual with this picture. So go ahead and grab yours and let's get started. Now we've had a little bit of a discussion in the comment section on one of my videos and while that pink clump of flowers definitely looks more like hydrangeas, the leaves and the two other lots of flowers definitely look a little bit more like geraniums however they've got four leaves instead of five so I do know that my geraniums do have five petals so I'm kind of going to do this last lot of flowers as a bit of a mix between the two so I do have some at home that have these sort of pink centers and lighter sort of outer petals so I'm going to go ahead and start out using my ivory and this is a great trick if you want like a really light color to start with. I know a lot of people like, especially with the Prisma color, they have these really really pale shades of various colors. They got like, you know, they got the pale, so they're called pale, pale sage and they got this really like deco pink and these which are really really light so by going in with the ivory first we're kind of covering some of the tooth so we don't get such bright colors straight down when we add something on top of it so that's what I'm going to do today so I'm starting with the ivory and then we're going to go ahead and start layering pinks on top and hopefully we can make a really nice and smooth gradient now with um, hydrangeas I've seen some that have this beautiful pale green sort of outer petals so that on the outside of them so I think I might sort of combine the two so I'm going to do these sort of pinky centers and then I'll add a little bit of green to sort of the outside of the petals so hopefully it will make a nice flower
Now I am of course planning on darkening up the very center of this but I just want to start out sort of mapping out my colors and just starting as I usually do with really light layers that way if you do make a mistake you can go back in and erase without leaving too much of the pigment back on the paper so I'm just going to go in now with my really light green and I'm just sort of adding just that little bit I'm kind of just tickling the paper a little bit and just on top of the uh, ivory and you can sort of just see it I'm not sure. hopefully you can I think I think you can I can sort of just see it on the camera but I will sort of where the shading will be I'll probably go in with a one shade darker maybe like the grass green I'm thinking and just adding a little bit darker areas here and there but the top parts I'll probably just be using this light green hope you're enjoying watching so far if you are I'd love it if you take the time to give this video a thumbs up it really really does help out the channel and if you've got time to pop a comment down below as well that is absolutely wonderful and helps out too and I love hearing from you guys too so if there's any questions you have please pop them down and I definitely will do my best to answer any questions that you do have and if you're new here I would love to have you subscribe and if you click the notification bell you'll get notified whenever I post new videos which is roughly every four days.
fuchsia so I'm gonna just go in now with the magenta and darken up even more so especially where there's any sort of overlapping and towards the very very center of these flowers as well the actual center I'll probably be using I'm thinking like a cream tone because the um, hydrangeas that I've seen that are looking similar to these as well they do have these really really light nearly white centers so I'll leave it at that and that way again I'm sort of combining two different flowers both the hydrangea and the geraniums that I've got
because we have this blue purpley flower just above it I want to bring in a tiny bit of those colors into here as well so I'm going to go in with this purple violet and kind of use it more as a shading tool so I'm sort of going in where it overlaps and I'm pretty much I don't think I'm going to use it too much on the top kind of petals just mainly underneath here I'm thinking if I want to go even darker I think we've also got the yeah, maybe the red violet we'll see what I end up with using yet but I want to go in with my Sakura jelly roll and just remove some of these outlines and then I'll go back in and have a look and see where I need to add more shadows or any more color just to make the flowers sort of make sense if if that makes sense so I'm just gonna go in and erase these black lines and then we'll go back in with our colored pencils
So I decided against the red violet and I ended up going with the mauve instead because it's still got a lot of those blue tones and it's quite dark. It's going to look really cool as a shadow. do exactly the same with the stem on this as I did with the very first flower we did. So I'm going in with the earth green, the juniper green and the chrome oxide green.
mine. I'm going to start on these little lanterns now, just do both of them at the same time using each individual pencil on both sides. So I want it sort of like a metallic kind of color, but I don't want it like super yellow. So I'm doing the burnt ochre as my base layer. And then I'll probably at the end, I might go in with something like the light yellow ochre, just to yellow up a little bit, but I just don't want it super yellow. So just make sure that you leave some sort of little highlighted areas. We don't put any color. So I'm kind of doing that towards the top and closer to the flame and then I'm having it darker down the bottom here underneath.
thinking that if we do end up doing a background on this I'll probably go back in and do a little bit more with this so maybe add some some little sort of yellowy or light areas on the um, the leaves or a little bit on the background but we'll see for now I'm just gonna leave it as it is and let's get started on the actual pot so for this pot I'm going to start out doing a layer of cinnamon so I'm going to do sort of all of these main areas in the cinnamon tone leaving these sort of horizontal stripes that, that, that are there I'm going to leave those and I'm having a thought I might end up doing those in maybe like a metallic like gel pen or Posca or something like that so maybe like a gold or silver I'll have to wait and see so because I've decided to do those in possibly one of those things I will leave those until I've done the center of this pot like the little bathroom because I don't want to rub my hand over it afterwards so I'm going to do that as my very last one and then if I decide to do something else and not using a pen I can do that then as well
right so as you can see here right here where I'm coloring now there is a little bit of a stain here so that works out really well with me adding more shadows on that side so hopefully I should be able to cover it up I have a feeling it's one of my kids who's been eating close by and they have just had like this little droplet go flying so but it is nice and small and it should be easy enough to cover up now with a little bit of venetian red i'm starting to map out my shadows and my highlights with this so i want the light source to be coming sort of from the top left so my left side of the pot will be a little bit lighter than the right side of the pot so i'll have more of a highlighted area on that left hand side and then I'll add way more shadows on the right hand side a bit later.
So I'm gonna go in now with my red violet and this will just help add a little bit more of those violet tones into it without completely going into the sort of blue range but it will still help it sort of fit in with the top flowers as well.
as you can see now I'm covering much more of this right hand side with my red violet and I'll probably end up using a little bit of black on top of this as well because I'm adding so many layers down now I should be able to add black and still have this color sort of shine through it To add a bit more shade, I'm going to go in with my black and I'll put this mainly across this sort of line just here. I'll probably add maybe a little bit to where we have those sort of crisscrossing lines and overlapping a little bit, but it won't be a lot, just like a little bit. So most of this will then go on this right hand side all the way down. Bye. 
so I'm just going to go up just along the very very edge sort of on the left hand side just to give that little bit of a feeling that it's curving around but I'm not going to go too much further in than that it's sort of just sitting along the edge here giving it that little bit of a curvage and other than that you can leave the leave the black I think now on that very bottom row there I did end up going over it with some uh, I think it was red violet just to blend it out a little bit more and get that sort of highlighted area in the center slightly less highlighted just because it's down the very bottom and I want it quite dark but I did forgot forget to film that but it's like literally about 30 seconds of footage that we didn't get so you can just go over all of that with the red violet So as I mentioned before, I'm going to leave these sort of horizontal lines that you can see, sort of these ones, these are the ones I mean, um, as well as these little triangles. I'm going to leave those for now because I'm planning on using maybe like a gel pen or something on them. So we're going to leave this picture for now. So this is of what it looks like. I'm really happy with how this is turning out and I'm really excited to get started on this bathroom next time. So until then, first of all, thank you so much for watching with me today and have a colourful day and I will see you again next time. Mm -hmm.